Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to retopologize the rest of the body, uh, like a boss or something. If you haven't seen the prerequisite videos how to retopologize the head like a boss, then go and do that now, we'll wait right here for you. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I approach retopology in passes. In the first topology pass, I'm thinking mainly about getting nice sculpting topology while setting myself up for the second topology pass, where I focus more on rigging and deformation. But before we get into that, let's take a step back and talk about how we might use ZBrush to best prepare our models for retopology. The first thing I would recommend when it comes to retopology is, if possible, make sure you do it in a neutral A pose or T pose. You don't want to pose your model and then retopologize it because then you can't make use of symmetry during the retopology stage, which makes the entire process twice as long. Another thing that will make retopology a lot easier is how you pose your arms, hands, and feet. So, for the arms, like I say, you could go for a neutral A pose or T pose. Both have their own benefits, but I usually sculpt somewhere between the two anyway, so I tend to leave it like this. I also make sure the forearm is in a neutral position by having the palm of the hands point towards the body. You'll also want to make sure you have a nice gap between your fingers and toes. This makes it easier to get polygons into those tricky spots. Don't worry if it looks wrong and unnatural because it will be easy to fix once we have nice topology and polygroups set up later. Now depending on how close together you've modelled the legs, it can also be a good idea to temporarily rotate these apart too, for the same reasons. Again, don't worry if it looks strange, since it's going to be easy to edit later. And that's about it for preparing the models, so let's look at some retopology tools right here in ZBrush. The first tool I'll mention is the topology brush, which you can find under B, T, O. And you need to make sure there are no subdivision levels on the model, so come over to Geometry and delete the lower subdivision levels. Now, the tool is very similar to the one that I used in the head tutorial, in that you can draw edges straight onto your model. Whenever you make four edges, it creates a polygon, and I can add more polygons by continuing these edges down like so. I can also remove edges by Alt dragging across an edge and I can remove all the residual edges by alt dragging somewhere on the model. This is really handy for keeping the model clean. Now, if I want to make a loop around the mesh, I need to start drawing the edge and then hold shift. And if I'm not settled with the placement of the loop, I can hold spacebar to move it around. When I'm ready to accept this as a mesh, I simply need to click on the underlying mesh. The thickness of the resulting mesh is dependent on the draw size of your brush, so for retopology you generally want this set to 1, which means no thickness. Now we can control shift click on the high res mesh to solo it, and then again to invert the selection, and we're left with our retopology mesh. Now we can split the high res mesh onto its own subtool using split hidden by going to subtool, split, split hidden. We can then begin subdividing our low res mesh, and then coming over to project all to project those high res details back onto our retopologize mesh, giving us subdivision levels to work with and bake our maps from. I will cover reprojecting the details later on in the tutorial. Now let's look at another method for creating topology in ZBrush. First you want to make sure everything but the model you want to retopo is hidden. Now let's insert a Z sphere and just shrink it down inside the mesh. Then come down to Topology and click Edit Topology. When we click on our mesh, you should see it create a point like this. If yours hasn't, hit Q to enter Draw Mode and know it should work. Now I can click three more points and then join it to the first point to make a polygon. And I can continue clicking around the mesh to make more vertices and more polygons. One thing you'll quickly notice when using this method is that the tool doesn't always draw from the vertex you want it to. This is easily remedied by control clicking on the vertex you want to draw from. Alternatively, you can click off the model to temporarily jump out of draw mode, then you will continue from whichever vertex you click next. You can also create new points along an edge just by clicking on it like so.
If you need to move a point, just hit W to enter your move tool. Then once you're done, come over to Adaptive Skin and turn the Density and Dynamesh resolution all the way down and hit Preview to check the topology. Once you're happy, click Make Adaptive Skin. You'll notice that a new tool is created up here and if you want to bring this into your working tool, just click insert and then select the new topology. Now, before I move into 3D Core, I'll show you how you can use the topology brush in conjunction with Zsphere Retopology. So let's say I've created some quick and easy loops using the topology brush, but now I want to use the Zsphere Retopology tools for more intricate topology. Well, to do this, first we need to create geometry from the topology brush. So I'll shrink my draw size to one and click to accept my topology. Then once I have this geometry as its own sub tool, I'll come up here and click clone, which will throw this mesh into its own tool. And that's all we need to do for this section. Now, when we set up a Zsphere topology, notice we have this button that says select topo. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Hit the button and select the topology we created using the topology brush. We can now continue where we left off using the Zsphere topology tools. Now, like I say, I'm going to use 3D Core for retopology since I'm more accustomed to their retopology tools, but I wanted to share these methods for those wanting the option of using ZBrush for retopology. If you follow my channel, you know I give out tons of information for free, but I also need to create premium content in order to support the free content. and. Uh, Apparently you're supposed to feed your children or something. Now, the first tutorials of this mini course will be totally free and you can pick up the remaining tutorials as well as Pass1 and Pass2 stylized base meshes and the reference sheets from gumroad.com forward slash Danny Mac to which I'll leave a link to in the description. The base meshes are intended to be for you to learn from but feel free to use them as you like.